Update 25 went live a few days ago and we already have some major news on what's coming next. The PTS is reopening soon with lots of new features. It's news time! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. The latest Inside the Vault article brought us some surprising news. I am assuming most of you already know what's coming with Update 26 next month, but if you don't know yet or if you wish to learn a few more bits and pieces along the way, as well as my opinion, make sure to keep watching. Overall, we are finally getting the perk loadouts, new content for daily ops, and even camp slots. Mm -hmm. I'm also going over a very concerning issue about corrupted data and lost characters. Lastly, I will showcase the new shelter, the Vault Quarters, with a unique aquarium. Well, without any further delays, let's jump right into the details. Before we get into Update 26 and what's coming, I want to talk about a very serious matter that came to my attention recently. There is a rare inventory bug that can result in corrupted data. When and if that happens, most of your items will be in the limbo, as in the system recognizes you have them, but it doesn't load them at all. As a result, your character might show an empty inventory while being over encumbered just like this or having a full stash with no entries at all. Scormy is a player who got affected by this rare bug, and he has been in a dispute war with Bethesda's customer support for months. All he asked for was for them to do a rollback and restore the data before it mysteriously got corrupted. But as shown in the email exchanges, the customer support team denied his request, claiming they are not able to repair the corrupted data. In one of the tickets, Bethesda mentioned there is only one single safe copy of our characters and the problem here is that the copy got corrupted as well when this happens the bugged character is done for according to the support team there is nothing they can do there is no going back no possible fix nothing moreover they always refer a future update is required to address this sort of issue however several new updates have been released ever since this bug happened to score me and so far nothing has changed. His character is still bugged and about 90% of the items he once had are still in the limbo. Skarmy also talked to other affected players and one of them apparently got her character deleted by Bethesda. Now, I know this sort of issue is extremely rare, but nonetheless, it's very serious and concerning. Can you imagine one day you wake up and all your items are simply gone and there is no solution possible? Years of progress, thousands of hours of gameplay, all gone. The fact that Bethesda doesn't seem to care much about character data backups is, on the very least, concerning and alarming. I mean, Fallout 76 is an online game and player characters are the crucial element there. Now, if there is no proper backup system and characters can simply get corrupted and lost, that's a brand new level. It's the entire integrity of the game that is at stake here. Where is the progression safety exactly? I know we have hundreds of bugs, some of them very game-breaking, but this sort of issue is just Insane. Unbelievable. According to the data miner DSG, Bethesda would have to keep reverting the character saves back until the data is not corrupted anymore, and that could take some time and effort if that's even possible. Anyway, I just hope this issue gets the proper attention it needs and eventually Bethesda comes up with a fix for this issue. If not, well, for our sakes, let's hope it remains as a very, very rare bug and won't affect many players in the future. Alright, now let's start with update 26 news. First of all, the public test server is reopening very soon. It has only been a few days since it shut down, right before update 25 hit the official servers. But now, Bethesda announced that the new patch is going live for testing next Friday, 5th of February. So if you play on PC, make sure to make room for some more gigabytes of content, because my friends, Bethesda is adding a lot of new things 
months with his next update. Like 25, which was focused on quality of life improvements and bug fixes, update 26 is focused on new features, which I'm about to cover in the next points. So, what's really coming? Well, let's start with the highly anticipated perk loadouts. We have been waiting for years and now it's finally happening. Bethesda unveiled several details on the upcoming special loadouts, but there is a really good twist. Besides choosing your perk cards, you will be able to change your special attributes as well and for free. Mm -hmm. No more perk points to swap attributes every time you want to tweak or completely change your build. I must confess, I didn't see this one coming. This feature unlocks at level 25 and you need to access a new item called Punch Card Machine to create, change and save your loadouts. You can build this machine at your camp or find them at all train stations across the map for free, of course. Initially, Bethesda is planning to add only two special loadout slots per character, but the option to unlock more slots over time will be there later on, most likely through the Atomic Shop, as Bethesda clarified already. So overall, you will be able to play with your attribute allocation and your perk assignments, and create any build you want, anything really, without having to change characters on top of that. Actually, with this new system, you no longer need to play different characters if that's what you want to do. You can simply create different builds and swap between them whenever you feel like. Now, that's that's what I call quality of life, probably more on the freedom side, but still, it's good to be able to choose. I mean, if you want, you can always play as many characters as you want. If you prefer to stick to one though, at least now, you can access completely different builds in just a few clicks. Muito to buy, I can't wait to test this one on the PTS next week. The next big news is the camp slots. I had never heard of such a feature before, but it actually makes sense, because most 76 players love to build. It's a core part of the game, with no doubt, and a huge part of the Atomic Shop as well. I mean, a huge part of it features camp building items. I would risk to say that most of their sales are actually camp building related items, from decor to prefabricated items and even floor or wall paints. Anyway, this feature is more like a system. It appears to be simple at first glance, but it's actually quite complex. First of all, you will get a new map interface with camp slots. It's like an automatic blueprint of your camp, which allows you to build a different camp in a different location, each one with its own budget. Yep, you will be able to personalize your camp slots to quickly understand which slot represents which camp. Hey. I think that makes sense. However, you are only allowed to have one active camp at a time. To swap the camp spawns, you need to access the new map interface and click on the camp slot you wish to spawn. It's pretty straightforward there. What about display cases and vending machines though? Well, according to Bethesda, your vending machines will get item slots, which are shared across all your camp slots, which means you don't have to set up your machines in every single camp pill. What a relief, huh? As for the display cases, the logic is the exact opposite. They are independent from camp to camp, which means you need to build the display cases you want in each camp and add all sorts of different items. They are not shared across camp slots. Moreover, Bethesda confirmed once again that they intend to enable display cases for shelters. They are working on this feature right now, so it's not yet clear if this will be included in Update 26 or not. Either way, this system sounds really promising and liberating. Goodbye, one single camp. I guess it's time for me to finally leave the mire after all these years. The next point is not exactly a surprise, at least not to me. It has been months since the data miner community discovered assets and files hinting that new content for daily ops was on the way. Now, it's official, Bethesda is really expanding the daily operations system with a new mission called Decryption, and the main goal here is to take down code carrier enemies to disable radio interceptors for initiate dodge. 
This new game mode will expand the randomized settings pool featuring new locations like Vault 96 and the Watauga Raider Arena, as well as new enemies such as Scorched and Motman cultists. You should also expect to fight against new mutations, such as attacks that can penetrate player defenses, enemies which can heal each other, and enemy deaths can even create a toxic hazard that can obviously harm players. Just a small note here, the healing mutation is called Vampire and it exists in the game files for a while now, so I guess this one is confirmed to go live soon. With all of this new content, you can also expect new rewards, mm -hmm. but as they mentioned, new weapon plans and new loot, so we are possibly getting new random plans as well, maybe some more signs and other camp items as they typically do. I guess we will soon find out when the PTS reopens again. What else is coming with update 26? Well, Bethesda wants to add batch crafting. I think this one is quite self-explanatory. Right now we can only craft item by item with a few exceptions, such as ammo, where one craft is generally dozens or hundreds of ammo per click, depending on what perks you are using mostly. Anyway, with this option, Bethesda will allow players to mass craft any item they want. Anyway, with this option, Bethesda will allow players to mass craft any item they want by adding crafting sliders to all workbenches. All you have to do is decide how much you wish to craft per click and that's it. Well, as long as you can afford the crafting requirements, that is. This is one of these features you never know you missed until it's there. No more click spam to craft foods or ammo or even cams. So that's another bright idea in my view. The melee system has been quite buggy for a long time now, it shouldn't be news for anyone at this point sadly, but lately hitting enemies with a melee weapon has become a challenge more than anything else, it's pretty much impossible if you end up playing in laggy or dying servers, even in VATS mode the hits keep missing for no good reason, it's dreadful, just look at this footage captured a few days ago, I need like 20 hits to kill a robot just because most hits do not register. The damage shows, but the enemy HP bar is not affected, it doesn't move at all. This persistent bug has been pestering us for too long, and now Bethesda wants to tweak the system and fix this bug at long last. They want to make melee hits more fluid and reliable overall. That's excellent news, maybe then melee builds will become viable once again. Hopefully. Something else coming with update 26 is more details on the map interface on the world activity menu. Right now we only have daily ops on the interface and quick alerts when tier 4 events start, such as Scorch Earth, A Colossal Problem and Encrypted. However, that's about to change, but as they want to add more details to this world activity menu, such as nuked zones, all sorts of events and even nearby player vending machines. I must say this is about time, it's so bothersome to search the entire map to see if and what events are currently active. Nooked areas are normally easy to spot, so that's no big deal, at least for me. Player vending machines are also well marked in my view, so that's not really necessary, but events need some more notifications, that's for sure, especially when we are talking about secondary ones. Anyway, let's see what else they end up adding to the interface, I'm really curious. Lastly, we have the aim assist system, which has been part of the past public test server patches, but due to some issues, it didn't make it to the official servers yet. Basically, this is an integrated AI feature to help controller players to aim better and kill enemies faster when outside of VATS mode. As a PC player, this feature means nothing much to me, but I do acknowledge how useful this feature can be for console players. It's really challenging to hit enemies out of VATS mode with certain weapons, especially at long range without a proper scope. So I do believe console players will have a blast and love this sort of easy mode shooting option whenever it's ready to get released. 
Alright, moving on, don't forget the first double script event is now live, it's called the script surplus and it allows you to get up to 300 script per day until the 1st of February. The event started yesterday, January 28th and it's ending next Monday. It's so nice to finally be able to redeem legendaries without having to drop dozens of them per day. It feels refreshing. Also, I really think they should make this event a permanent change. Farming legendaries is way too easy in 2021 and 150 daily script is way too low. 300 is a more proportional amount. They should adjust the currency daily limits to the natural progress of the game. But sadly, I don't think that's happening so soon despite all the feedback requesting daily currency increases. Well, one can hope at least, maybe they will do it sooner than we expect. Lastly, I want to quickly show you the new Vault Quarters shelter featuring a huge and beautiful aquarium. This shelter is the largest one until date, at least in terms of radius, and surprisingly, it's a bit cheaper than the Atrium shelter, for example. It has the same price as the Vault Lobby, 1,500 atoms, Alright, showcase time now. There is a huge main hall with a green sort of artificial turf and two side rooms with some gorgeous orange walls. Kidding, it's, it's kind of ugly, but you know, it is what it is. Then we have a corridor and stairs leading to the top of the aquarium. You can find three more rooms there, one to the left and two more to the front. As you can see, each room is massive and I wouldn't even know how to fill up this entire shelter. It's just so much space. Anyway, the highlight is definitely the aquarium. You can even swim there. Mm -hmm. If you use the power armor glitch to go through the windows there, you can easily get inside and explore. There are fishes, water plants and rocks there, as well as a small easter egg. This cave diving helmet on top of a rock. I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to mean, but it's there. Oh, and let's not forget how clean the water is, with some bubbles and effects, and yeah, it's just beautiful and different. It's probably the most pleasant shelter we had until date. I mean, the rooms are kind of ugly, especially mixing all these colors, orange, green, purple, blue, I don't know, it has basically every color there, but the aquarium balances everything out. That's for sure. So yeah, that's it for this short showcase. And the random bug for this news is me dead half inside the map. What a wonderful image. I couldn't resist to share that. It's part of the funny bugs category. So, you know, why not share it? I'm not sure how that happened. I was actually all tabbed when I died, but hey, it's proof your body can penetrate the map. That's all I'm going to say here. Anyway, it's time to wrap things up. I am still working on the patch notes with lots of testing and featuring the major changes apart from, you know, everything I have already covered in this past video. Feel free to check it out if you haven't yet. So stay tuned for more. I have also been testing daily ops and I got some interesting information on how everything works now regarding the plans and the re-rolling rule. It's quite confusing at first, but I'm looking forward to clarify everything. Well, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching and for being here until this point. And that's it, I will see you all very very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!